Joker, Greg, uh, 12.30 over here, just checking with you. Uh, heading over there, come see if we can get a window and paddle out there. Uh, Jaws, so I'll see you there, what's your plan is? Give it a shot, talk to you, brother. Later. You know, five years ago, toe surfing was kind of a cool thing, and I think Greg, more than anyone, said, wait a minute, we can still paddle these waves, and sat out the back on a 10-foot board and paddled into bigger waves than anyone, and he leads by example, and I think that uh, he was at the forefront of that movement, and still is. Wait, the passion is ending. It fell together, and it fell apart, and now the dead ends are binding. I was introduced to big wave surfing through a friend from San Clemente named John Walla. That was right when there was a real big wave kind of push here out of Southern California. You know, Mike Parsons, McNulty Brothers, and you're seeing just constant photos in the magazines and hearing about this wave of Total Santos. And just through you know the community here surfing in San Clemente, you know, everyone was always saying, "Hey, John Walla, like you know, he goes down there and he is you know the most underground, hardcore charging, you know." cat of them all and um, so I kept talking to him and kind of you know picking his brain about what it's like and you know sort of you know can you take me down there can you take me down there and you know since I grew up in San Clemente I knew knew the Long family you know for a long time and um, so as soon as I started going out there it was kind of one of those things where they really started to kind of get interested you know the whole family even their dad Steve and everyone and um, so I think that was the first time that he went out there he's probably 14 you know you know, I did, he was just always super comfortable out there. I mean, just not worried, you know? It was just a slow, you know, progression, you know, and just pushing yourself enough to where you're kind of at the edge of your comfort zone and, you know, hanging out there until you kind of get a grasp of, just, uh, you know, what it's like at, you know, 30 foot faces or however big, and then, you know, slowly go, you know, again. And, um, you know, it's just like that. Everything else, you know, in, in my surfing life, you know, it was just basically turned upside down. You know, contest didn't matter. My performance surfing just kind of, you know, was dismissed that, you know, I knew then, like, big waves, that's my love and passion, and that's what I'm going to, you know, dedicate my surfing life and career towards. He's, uh, he's always been, like, super committed, you know? That's, it, that's his deal. You're not going to take off on waves like that if, you know, unless that's what you want to do in, in your heart, unless that's what you really wanted to do from the get-go. <laughs> wow. For the most part, I mean, like, the same guys are doing the same thing over and over, and it, there's a reason, you know? It's not because they're chasing the, the money or the fame. I mean, they're just, you know, that committed. <laughs> Sick, dude. Oh, oh heaviest best wave of his life, man. That was insane. <laughs> Fear is an integral part of you know, big wave surfing. I think once you understand it and what you're doing out there and what you can physically and mentally accomplish, it becomes a huge driving force you know, as to why we're doing what we're doing. It's that challenge of mentally being able to overcome that. It's always there, you know, especially on the big days. Uh, anything over 15 feet, you know, and you're starting to feel butterflies and once you get into those 25 foot days, it's, um, it's really, it's right there, you know. It's, uh, it can either be a, a help or a hindrance. You know, without a doubt, you know, every big wave session I, I go out in, you know, I you know have a few of those contemplative moments. The train of thought stops of like, what should I do? Is this right or is this wrong? And it all becomes a feeling like everything around you, everything slows down, and you see your friend go on a wave that big and that committed, head down. You know, that's motivating for everyone else in the lineup.
gets the wind under his nose and starts to fall and you just see like how big this wave really is and I just remember how well he he rode that wave and it's just etched in my brain that for some reason like every time I think of Greg Long I think of like a yellow board at Porto Escondido. That same feeling that you know I got when I was 15 years old you know every time I paddle out there it's a new unique experience and yeah it's uh, been an amazing you know 10 years of kind of swell chasing and just you know really uh, you know appreciative of all the amazing people you know I've met along the way. Greg's like ultra well-spoken, best manners ever. He's like the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry one day. But he has this one thing. He gets this road rage sometimes that just comes out of nowhere. And he drives a lot, you know, he's always the guy to volunteer to drive through the night. So he puts his little spectacles on because he's got to wear driving glasses. <laughs> he looks like Clark Kent. And he'll be driving and be, I'll just wake up in the back of the van to hear him just yelling to himself, like pounding the dashboard because somebody cut him off. <laughs> he gets so pissed. The full Little League dad comes out. <laughs> That's pretty funny.